So hello and welcome along to another edition of Isolation Interviews for Hospital Radio and my YouTube channel. And I'm super excited to be joined by a very talented actor in the form of Robert Barthurst. Thank you for joining me. Uh, hi, Matthew. So, I mean, obviously life has been very strange the last year. How have you found yourself, uh, you know, how have you found your time over the last year with the many lockdowns and everything we've been going through? Oh, it's miserable. Uh, I hated it. Um, and uh, it came as a surprise that uh, it should happen. I was doing a play in, um, in March. It was a play I'd been preparing for 10 years. I'm, not ple I'm, not, I'm, I'm making no special pleading here because everybody in theatre is the same. Um, but it was a show, a two-hander with cartoons, um, uh, uh, which I was doing with Rebecca Johnson. And um, uh, it was, yeah, it was, <laughs> it was going really well. We had uh, three weeks of the 12-week run uh, under our belt. And uh, I mean, of course, the, the whole situation was looming, but it was a, an unfamiliar territory for everybody, including our administrators. So um, nobody knew quite what was happening. We still don't, of course. But... Um, uh, anyway, so yeah, the, 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 that play came to an end, and of course, I, uh, as with everybody else, I'd like to uh, find a way of reviving it, um, which is which is possible. Um, so, you know, in professionally, that was uh, a disappointment, <laughs> to say the least. And um, yeah, then find ourselves in this situation, but we're all we're all in it together and all that. And so, um, but it is, it's it's it's. Um, it's weird, and uh, we are, and there's so many different opinions now flo floating around, and, and and it's so polarized and so bitter in many ways as well, uh, unnecessarily bitter, really, and and everybody is an amateur epidemiologist now. Suddenly, they seem to have got degrees in it, just by reading what's going on and listening to everything. Um, but and the most important thing is that in about a year's time, everyone's going to be able to say I was right all along. So, and nobody is and nobody knows what's happening um so uh, however certain one is about one's opinion about what is happening and what should be happening um the answer is no one knows uh so we're sort of making it up as we go along which of course adds to the frustration uh and uh so yeah it's it's um uh, it's a time which i think um everyone says it's going to be a big reset and and so forth um yeah, maybe. Uh, and certainly, certainly, certainly values have been assessed. Um, but also, it's, it's really important when things do get better, just to draw a line under it and, and, um, and move on and not be too um, scarred by it, if, if possible. But uh, obviously, there are many scars along the way. I mean, when when we were in the kind of the height of the, the the first lockdown, did you find yourself doing anything you wouldn't normally do? You know, gardening, cooking, baking. You know, and did you find yourself learning new skills? Um, my mother-in-law used to say that I would take up gardening when I'd retired, and my, I'd say my greenhouse is looking fantastic, and uh, I don't want to retire. <laughs> I I hope that next year my greenhouse is going to be barren. Uh, no, I do. I really, really enjoyed it. I, had, I did. To take, yeah, I did. I like so many people. I took up vegetables. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I've loved it. And uh, there's been two springs now uh, of seedlings. Um, and uh, yes, there's enormous joy in that. Uh, and yes, and, and um, but I just, you just, you know, I live in a place where it has a greenhouse. So, so I'm, I've, I've got that outlet. Uh, I just... Well, well, I feel naturally anxious for people who, who don't and uh, have screaming children. My children have left home and they're, they're screaming from afar, not, not under, around my table. But um, it's uh, so, yeah, there was all sorts of things like that, which, of course, uh, added to the richness of life. Um, and you have to find them and you have to embrace them and, and run with them and uh, not rail against the situation too much. I think that's the other thing as well is that it's kind of brought people, families, friends closer together in the sense that you maybe you've spoken, you know, people are speaking to people that they wouldn't otherwise get the chance to, to catch up with. And, and it's just kind of made everyone check in on people. And we've all kind of made sure that neighbours and friends are, are still OK because, you know, you don't hear from, other, hear from them otherwise. Uh, yeah, absolutely. It's, it's made you more aware of that. Um, uh, it's this. Uh, it also uh, is you, it, it, with people who are further away, you have to make sure you aren't just ringing up your friends now that things are opening up and saying hello again. And I haven't been in touch with you for a year and a half, but um, 
so the, your, your good friends, you, you had to sort of work at making sure that you were constantly in touch and, 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 and what's going on with them. Um, and I suspect a lot of people will probably be putting a line through some of their address books and thinking, well, actually, uh, they're the B list, <laughs> you know, and, um, and, and I'm going to uh, sort of rationalize my friendship group. I think a lot of people possibly be doing that. I'm not saying I am, but I, is this a, if you haven't seen someone for a while, it's rather like not having used a drawer for three years. You think, well, well why have it full of stuff? Um, so uh, I, I think a lot of people will find it very unsettling, uh, which is why I think one should just draw a line and, and just and not dwell on the, the, the ghastliness of it all. And it has been ghastly. Uh, I, don't, I don't actually um, celebrate too much of, of this last year. Um, I know there are aspects of it which are, which are good, but uh, I think there's a lot of distraction as well. Now we must talk about your amazing career. I mean, for you, obviously you've done so many fantastic roles, but where did the love of acting first come from? Do you remember the first time that you thought that's what I want to do? I think perhaps I ought to lie down in a psychiatrist's chair here and, uh, <laughs> and uh, not look you in the eye. <laughs> I don't know, it's, what, it's where I feel most comfortable, oddly enough. I mean, it's really strange. I mean, I, 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 every actor's from about 13, I suppose, I felt that. Um, I knew I wanted to do it. I didn't really own up to it until I was about 25. Um, I don't, I'm not somebody to sort of announce my ambitions before they're realized, uh, or in any way realized. And so it's a bit sort of, you, know, you say you want to do that, and, and nobody, I mean, you get the, the any, any, anybody saying they want to be an actor will, will get quizzical looks and uh, advice not to do it. I knew that, so I wasn't going to ask anybody's permission to do it. I just did as much as I could in the, in the places that I, were, I was, schools and colleges and so forth. Um, and, but what, what actually drives you to do it is, uh, I've never done that much therapy, so I don't know, but it is, um, it's, yeah, it's where you feel most comfortable in a strange way, despite, <laughs> despite the terror. And obviously you've had the, 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 the pleasure of doing both, you know, TV work and stage work. Is there one that you prefer? Is there like a, a, an area that you feel you just, you just love more than the other? I think they're exactly the same. And people say that they're different, but there, it isn't. It's about getting through to an audience. It's about, and obviously an audience in a theatre, you've got to make sure that row Z gets the benefit that row A is getting. And uh, that's a technical thing. But essentially you're working to an audience uh, in, in all medium, mediums. And uh, so uh, you just sort of try and land, land, the, land the script to them. I mean, of course, yes. I mean, in, in theatre, you know at the end of an evening whether it's been any good or not, and you can decide whether it's been fun or not. In television, filming might be fun, but you don't know whether it's any good or not for another six months until after it comes out. So in a sense, the sort of the real true enjoyment of it is, is put on hold for, for quite a while. So in a sense, the, for, for instance, reaction um theater of course is um yeah can't can't be beaten but um i love the process of filming and and anyone who comes on set who's um sometimes you get people on set who have won an auction to to come and view the filming and um after about half an hour they're losing the will to live <laughs> they just think, what is this it's taking so long i love the process i love the, the length of time it takes to film four minutes of material which is all day um, and so uh, it's, that's, that has its own level of sort of concentration. So, that, but so yeah, I mean, I, what, what I really like doing is really good language. And I just, I just, you just yearn for good scripts. And, I mean, what, um, so whether it's in television or film, I don't know. I was going to say, one of the, the, the roles that obviously people just love completely is Cold Feet. That's obviously a show that's been a part of your life for a long while. I mean, do you remember the first time you thought, oh, this is going to be quite, a, quite an interesting show. This is going to really work and the viewers are going to, going to enjoy this. It was, a, it, was a, it was a good sort of 50 minute drama, uh, comedy drama. In 1996, we filmed the pilot. And I thought it was a one-off. Everybody thought it was a one-off. Um, we went option for, to do a series of it. Uh, and so uh, somebody said to me, oh, this could make a series. And I, went, you know, but I wasn't sure then. Um, it went out and, and it, 
it died a death actually i mean it it, 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 it uh, no one saw it really uh, and itv parked it and then it won an award it won the montreux gold award and uh, itv then decided it was really rather good and so they gave it a series uh, and then the first series but each time it was always the last series we were, we were ever going to do of it and, we, and we've done nine so far in over that 23 year period but we never assume it's going to go on um and no one assumed it was going to be any good so so it was even if it was successful um no one referred to its success as we were doing it no one assumed that just because it worked last year it was going to work this year and there was always that moment before as when a series went out when a cult series went out when when the critics were saying oh, well you know let's see if this is this the end you know will it be will it will it will it and it, and it always i mean by and large sorry, by and large it, it um it, it worked and um and we finished it uh, a year and a half ago or so um yeah you know in, in in pretty good state and people seem to be still enjoying it the figures were very good um so uh, at no stage did anyone say oh this is really good um because we were still making it i can look back at it and say yeah it was all right went well and I mean, obviously, there was a big gap kind of in the middle, um, you know, where, where it wasn't on. And was there ever a time during that period that you thought it would come back? Or at that point, did you think maybe it had finished? I know. No, no. I spent four years saying, when people ask that question, <laughs> saying, oh, no, no, it was of its time. It was uh, no point reheating the souffle, you know. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, and uh, then uh, ITV said, well, can we do any more? And actually, it made sense because, because of the gap, we'd all got older. And uh, we're seeing life through a slightly different prism from how we were when we were um, in our 20s and 30s. Um, and so suddenly it was, it was, it was uh, the middle-aged one. And maybe in you know, five years' time or so, I have no idea. I don't know what the plans are. But uh, there would be some value in principle in doing you know, the third age of Cold Feet you know, and, and seeing those characters and seeing how, they, how decrepit they've gotten and... and how um, how they might have changed in some way, or how they changed with each other, and so forth. I think there was, there was some value in that. Uh, it's quite rare, I mean, to see to see it was rather like that Seven Up program with um, Michael Apted did, um, and seeing the <laughs> seeing people either grow up or uh, you know get more juvenile as they get older. I mean, one of the great things about the show, which I think that the audience love, is the characters. And obviously, you've got you know five amazing actors on that show, and and you all seem to get on really well. So, do you think it helps that you 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 know you get on well off set and on set? Do you think that that kind of helps? It's not necessary. I mean, you can you can work with someone you can't bear, and you can say I love you to someone you can't bear because you're an actor and you're acting it. Um, but it helps if you, if, you, if you get on with them. It helps if you understand. I mean, it's different, actually. Oddly enough, it's, it's all relevant as to whether you like them personally in some ways. I mean, it's great when you do, and it's enjoyable, and it's, it's, it's a more enjoyable process, whether it's on stage or whether it's on, on telly, when you've got to spend so many hours with these people. Um, but it's not vital, oddly enough, because it's, you're, you're, you're sort of, there's only half of you there anyway, because you're trying to, land a, a character and la land a part and la land a part which ends on when the director says cut uh, so um, but you sort of have to enjoy their process now everybody has comes at things from different different ways so you, you know some people will approach a way of, of filming and you accommodate that and and you work around each other and and you're always working with and uh, you know working working together but that's a professional thing it's it's almost separate from the personal, but it's great when the personal works as well. I mean, it's it's a it's a great show for telling great stories. I mean, obviously we've seen you know with with Faye Ripley, you know, doing the cancer storyline. Uh, John Thompson, I had the pleasure of speaking to him, and and we talked about his de the, the depression storyline. And obviously your character had the kind of the the full you know falling apart of his marriage, and and the kind of just kind of his world was just kind of spiraling out of control. He was lo lost his job and everything. So to play those kind of really serious storylines, but put that funny sort of spin on them and and you know doing the, the the sort of the light and shade must be a lot of fun yeah light and shade is a, is a really good way of looking at it because because uh, mike bullen his writing you can it's, it's it's sad and funny in the same breath sometimes and at its best it's, it's at, its best. at its i don't think that, that i'm not interested so much in 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 issue dramas 
you know, I, my least favorite word in, in all drama, and this is not a fashion word view, my least favorite word is storyline, because the storyline is essentially the skeleton. And if yeah, fine, yeah, you need a storyline. Of course you do. It's the structure. It's the scaffolding. It's whatever, you know, whatever analogy you want to bring of it. It's not, but it's not the flesh. The flesh comes in almost, almost between the lines as well. Um, obviously, and, 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 and sort of the richness of the characterization is, is, is well, the stories, uh, they, 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 they're swung along by story, but they're not, but if it's just a story, but you might as well just read a soap digest. You might read and say, well, we're dealing with this here. And I think that there's a real danger of falling into the trap of saying, in this, in this episode, we bravely tackle the issue of, because in two episodes time, you can't bravely tackle the issue of, because you tackled it two episodes ago. It's as if, you know, you have to sort of use up all these various issues. And whereas Cold Feet is about nothing, essentially. It's about people. It's about characters and how they rub off, rub, rub, rub along together. And, uh, okay, you can have the, the, you know, the issues and, and issue, you know, things do, they crash into ordinary life. But uh, so long as it's more about the characters than about flagship, you know, flagged up, issue-based dramas. Um, and other shows do that much better. I mean, obviously, you know, over your career, you've also had the pleasure of traveling abroad. I mean, I know you've got to go and do a bit of Wild at Heart over in South Africa. Mm -hmm. You know, many different um, times you get to, 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 to sort of see the world. So, I mean, mm -hmm. is that kind of a, a part of the, the job that you love, you know, getting to see places you maybe wouldn't otherwise get to, to visit? It's really important when you're, when you're working abroad to acknowledge golden moments as they're happening and not just uh, in retrospect. You know, you find yourself in, in these fantastic locations. In, well, I've been to Australia, the Black Sea, on uh, South America, uh, all, all sorts of places, South Africa. Um, and and uh, again, half you sort of isn't there because you're, you're working. Uh, but but the, you've got to stand aside from that and just say, Look at this! Look at this. The, the bay here at Sydney <laughs> is fantastic. Or this wildlife reserve I'm standing, and uh, that if that rhino doesn't charge me, I'm having a wonderful time. And and, and it's uh, you you just acknowledge those really 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 golden moments. And there's and with luck in a career in that business, you've you you will get them. Um, uh, you also get the. Uh, the night shoot in a car park in Deptford, you know, uh, uh, so, you know, there's, there's a balance there to be uh, suffered, but um, yeah, but you do, you get, you get fantastic opportunities. I love, I love Budapest. I mean, lots of filming goes on in Budapest and Prague and places and, and uh, it's a real treat. I was in Berlin recently in Dresden and Munich and um, you, you just, you just grasp these. Okay, oh, Chicago is working, in, doing a play there. And I adored Chicago. I was there for months, and um, uh, there were so many aspects of it, and I devoured all the all the opportunities that there were, there were there, whether it was baseball or jazz or architecture. And uh, so, when you're working, it is important to not just be sunk into the work, but just to, when when the opportunity arises, to stand outside and to sort of exult in the circumstances you find yourself in. Now, I mean, over the over the course of your career, has there been a character or a role that you've loved playing more than any other? That one that just you just you know got your teeth into and you thought this is just perfect. I think I've got one answer to this, and and I only say this because it's unfinished business. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, I've done lots of stuff which I've enjoyed, of course, and um, some things have gone well, some things haven't, and um, and uh, I, uh, Stephen Moffat wrote a sitcom in the early nineties which I, I just think uh, was superbly written. I've, 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 it's, it's called Joking Apart. It's hardly available. There are DVDs available for it. Um, somebody produced a, um, a, a DVD of it. The BBC didn't, uh, so he did. He was a fan of the show, <laughs> he put it on. Um, I, and people do talk about it. I mean, it was prehistory and it was only, it was just about in color, it was in, but it was, um, it was fast and we did two series of it over a four or five year period. Um, and it was about Stephen Moffat who has gone on with you know, Sherlock and Doctor Who and, and uh, all the rest of it. Um, and it, I was sort of playing him and, and he wrote, a, it was his divorce and he got divorced in the first episode. A lot of flashbacks and things. Um, but all I can say is that uh, it was so well constructed that in one, my favorite point in, in, I mean, there's several episodes, which I'm hitting this microphone again. Uh, there's several episodes in which 
which was so well, so well constructed that in one of them, and we had a studio audience there, uh, one of the characters played by Paul Raffield, he, he, he opened a door and the audience laughed for about a minute. Now, you know, that was not funny in its own way, Paul opening a door, but it was the, it was the, it was the situation that, that Stephen had crafted, which, which was just brilliant and funny and the situation came crashing in on itself. So to tell somebody that something was funny or something was exhilarating or, or enjoyable, it's impossible. Um, I would say go and see Fine joking apart and okay, and, and, and enjoy the sort of 90s ethic of it. Uh, it is a period piece, but it isn't about the 90s. It just happened to be set in the 90s and, and filmed in the 90s. Um, and so the technology, which Stephen uses brilliantly, he uses answer phones and huge brick mobile phones for, as sort of um, fast, fast tools, really. Um, and I would say, joking apart, yeah, without doubt, it was the most enjoyable job I will ever do. And do you think there is a dream going forward, a, a role that you haven't played or a, a, a project that you haven't done that you would love to do going forward? Well, I like certain things I'd like to do to succeed. I'd like to, uh, my, 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 show, my stage show, I'd like to see that through. I'm uh, hoping that I'll be able to do that um, before long. I've just uh, co-directed for the first time a, a short film about jockeys. Um, it's called The Fall. And uh, I really enjoyed doing that because when we were filming it, it it's, a, it's a short, 20 minute short. Um, I had no desire to be in front of the camera at all. It was just for the first time, I sort of just, I suddenly realized, gosh, you know, I'm really, really enjoying this. And um, was editing it the other day. It's looking promising, so I hope that works. Of course, yes, there's loads and loads of stuff. I really want to, I mean, I'm filming stuff at the moment, which may or may not work. And um, so, yeah, there's all sorts of things. I'd like to, in the classics of, um, uh, I'd like to film more, more, more classical theater as well. Um, Chekhov, I'd like to do a bit more of. I've done, done some. Um, uh, and... Uh, yeah, no, I don't, I'm not one of these actors who has a sort of like a calendar of parts that they, 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 they rip off. Um, but um, uh, I see that uh, Ian McKellen is playing Hamlet coming up. Um, uh, people said that he was too old to play Hamlet, uh, who was meant to be 20. And uh, he uh, rather brilliantly said that uh, he's just played Gandalf, who's 7,000 years old, and no one said he was too young. So, so uh, uh, you know, there's, there's, always, there's always scope <laughs> for finding uh, new work. Now, I just want to say it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. I could and continue for hours. But before we go, is there any messages you would like to, to give to any of the, the, the patients who are currently stuck in hospital at the moment? Well, I know. well I've been in hospital several times. I know what it's like um, to be stuck in there and only seeing life through that window and that corner of that window that you can see. Um, it's, uh, yeah, no, it, takes, uh, it takes strength. Um, get, keep strong, keep strong, keep, keep fear, keep believing, keep strong and uh, enjoy everyone around you, even the annoying ones. <laughs> Thank you so much, Robert. It's been an absolute pleasure. Of course, keep safe and uh, yeah, keep well. Thanks, Matthew.